sing out as we prepare our hearts to receive the gospel this morning. Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us. Speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense? when they heard what you said. He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands, that does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him saying, send her away for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, we encounter Jesus going into the territory of Tyre and Sidon. That may not mean anything to you, maybe it does, uh, but if it doesn't, it's foreign territory. And he's going there, if you remember back a few weeks ago, we had the feeding of the 5,000, right before Jesus feeds all those people, he's gone away seeking a secluded place, right? So for a few weeks now, we've been doing these readings from Matthew, and Jesus keeps trying to find time to rest, and the crowds keep finding him. So he decides to go to a different territory. So he's not there to spread the word of God that the kingdom has come near, but to take a break away from the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As he's walking, seeking a place for rest and restoration, a woman from that region calls out to him, not just to chat, not just so she can meet this Jesus that maybe she's heard about. She calls out in desperation for her daughter is tormented by a demon. Jesus ignores her. But we don't know why he ignores her. 
like a lot of things in scripture that don't have an overt explanation. There's a lot of ideas out there, a lot of thoughtful contemplation about this. Some commentators assert that Jesus ignores her because he's testing her faith. Perhaps he's just really tired. We know he's seeking some rest. Maybe he just hopes if he ignores the woman, she'll go away. Or maybe still this Canaanite woman as Matthew clearly labels her. Maybe this Canaanite woman is a foreigner and not just any foreigner, a loathed foreigner, whom Jesus believes to be outside of his mission. So he ignores her. But she's persistent and she starts to get really annoying because she keeps calling out. So the disciples ask Jesus to send her away. And Jesus answers, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, I'm not here for you, so go away. Lord, help me, she pleads. Jesus replies, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. In other words, there's not enough for you. If I offer you my time, energy, and healing, that will somehow diminish the current ministry. The woman retorts, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. The woman brings in to this back and forth an image of the table. Now, where do you see Jesus in scripture at table? Who is he with at table? The table is the very place where Jesus has been breaking down barriers and expanding the reach of grace, eating at the table with prostitutes, tax collectors, the other people, the loathed people in his context. In other words, she might be saying, you, Jesus, you have the capacity to expand the reach of that socially disruptive new perspective mission and ministry to me, a person who is also in need. There is enough Jesus for me, despite our ethnic differences, despite our ages old animosities. You, Jesus, can in this moment realize that the status quo of your mission, which seems to be working fine for you and the lost sheep of Israel, could be expanded to include even me and all that I represent to you, a menacing dog. The commentator Debbie Thomas imagines at least a full moment of stunned silence in the wake of the Canaanite woman's words. Do the implications of her quick retort ricochet around in Jesus's mind and heart in that instant until he sees her. Her persistence, her determination to stay engaged, her desperation for a fullness of life for her daughter and recognize her faith. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. This time of of COVID-induced isolation and upheaval is a time when we might be tempted even more so than before to turn in on ourselves, yeah? To ignore people persistently calling, shouting, protesting, and demanding a fullness of life for themselves and for others who are often left only the crumbs that fall from the table. When we interpret this text in a way that honors the woman's determination and sees Jesus as listening and learning as a divine attribute rather than something we have to explain away as a tricky kind of test. There is good news and constructive challenge to be heard. I mean, why is it that in interpreting this text, the idea that Jesus might listen and learn something is seen as a negative interpretation, that that's a flaw? Why don't see that as a divine attribute to be able to listen and learn. Good news is here for the oppressed and the disregarded and their allies, their, that persistence towards justice and healing and dignity is counted as faith and rewarded by God. And also a kind of double-edged challenge and good news for those of us who are maybe just waking up to our obliviousness, obliviousness to the plight of others. I include myself in that camp. 
if God embodied in flesh can have an awakening of heart and a change of perspective and turn, then we who are made in the image of God can as well. If Jesus's worldview could be disrupted to realize that his missional policies, if you will, could be changed to accommodate a more expansive vision of healing and grace, then perhaps we can be challenged and take heart knowing the spirit is capable of accompanying us on a similar transformative journey. We need to hear that change is possible, that change of heart and change of perspective and change of policy is not only possible, but necessary for the coming about of the expansive kingdom of God. Our nation and probably us as individuals need to hear from our scriptures that often when we think the status quo is working just fine and serving us just fine, it is not necessarily making space for everyone to thrive. The Canaanite woman approaches Jesus and is persistent because her family is not thriving. Her daughter is tormented, and therefore she and her family are tormented. Good news, gospel, is that Jesus is transformed by the desperate tenacity of this woman. We are not Jesus, but our Lord and Savior calls us to be likewise disrupted by the tormenting demons of racial injustice and bigotry, not to ignore, not to fear that if policies change, white people will somehow get less from the table, not to hush and dismiss those tormented, seeing them only as angry thugs and undeserving of a place at the table. We are called to see determination and persistence, not as an annoyance, but as a true marker of anguish, of broken systems, and an outcry that's undergirded by a fierce hope that life can be different and better, the invite to the table can be broader, and transformative change can happen. Ultimately, Jesus offers healing to this woman's daughter and a public acknowledgement of her incredible faith and determination. For all that ails us, for all the ills, global, societal, communal, personal, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, we take a cue from the Canaanite woman and persist in our pleading with God for healing, for justice, for listening and learning, for wholeness. And we hear from the prophet, thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. Amen. Mike is going to lead us in our hymn of the day, Healer of Our Every Ill. Thanks, Mike. Joy 
joy beholding how your grace is still unfolding give us all your vision god of love healer of our every Ill. light of each tomorrow give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow give us strength to love each other sister and every brother spirit of all kindness be our guide healer of our every ill light of each tomorrow give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You who know each thought and feeling, teach us all your way of healing. Spirit of compassion, fill each heart. Beyond our fear and hope, beyond our sorrow. Amen.